You know, Tamara, it was wonderful meeting you for the first time after you were appointed to Geneva, where it had been so long when Diane was ambassador. Mm -hmm. But then I realised that we were probably about the same age. And then having asked you, I realised that we were probably even at school together in the kindergarten at Ladies. Mm -hmm. And those were very interesting times to grow up in, the 60s and the 70s. Especially, if I may say so, they were seminal for Tamils. You know, we had a very comfortable life, but you grew up, if you're in the same class as I was, in the first year that suffered from standardization. And I think that was the beginning of young Tamils feeling they had no future. But, you know, you're an unusual Tamil. And before we go on to yourself, could you tell us a bit about your parents? Because I gather your father was from Jaffna and your mother from the hill country. And I read the biography of your mother. And apparently both parents were furious when they got married. So, tell me a bit about that. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, my parents influenced me quite a lot in the way I looked at uh, uh, Sri Lankans or Sri Lanka or what it is to be uh, a Tamil in Sri Lanka. I did not, uh, we were not raised to think of ourselves as Tamils, but rather as Sri Lankans. Both my parents, my, fa my mother comes from a family yes, from Badula, and her father was involved in the independence struggle. He was the president of the Congress party in Badula. And so he had, when uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru used to visit Sri Lanka, they stayed with them. And uh, so my mother grew up in that context. In fact, my grandfather was a very wealthy man, uh, a businessman, and he used to get even his suits from, from Oxford. And then uh, with the, um, the, the, the independence struggle in beginning in, in, in India, uh, which also very much influenced him, uh, he changed uh, his, even his clothes to um, handwoven. So he was wearing verti and mm -hmm. he used to wear a turban. And, uh, and um, then he actually raised my mother also to uh, go into politics and to fight the caste system and uh, to be um, uh, fight for uh, women's liberation at the time. So this is, we are talking about uh, in the 40s. And uh, so my mother grew up in that context and she used to make public speeches when she was 14 years old against the caste system. Mm -hmm and uh, that women should be out there and fighting. And uh, my father's family was, uh, they're from, they were from Jaffna, and, but my father, my grandfather was a planter in, in the upcountry. And uh, my father and his brother, younger brother and two younger sisters went to school in Jaffna. And uh, so his, if you like, his father was very close to the British and I don't know what happened, but uh, my father uh, was uh, uh, very much involved in the resistance against the British and joined the left, which is very different from his family. Mm -hmm. I feel like his family was probably more comprado mm -hmm. in that sense. And so in a sense, both my parents came from that kind of background and both of them uh, in, grew up in the context of the independence struggle. I remember my mother saying uh, that they were all terrified when the Japanese bombed uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it was Trinca Maria. Yeah? There were yeah, bombs bomb in Colombo. So, yeah. Right. And uh, so she would, she would tell stories about how they used to, to hide uh, at the time. And then, and, uh, and then in that, it was in that context. And my parents themselves uh, actually ran away. Really because, <laughs> yes, because uh, my mother was married. Uh, she was forced to marry when she was 18. Mm -hmm. uh, she. Um, was married to a young law student from Matale and uh, when uh, and, and he used to beat her up she went to really? live in Matale yeah. and he used to beat her up and she was already pregnant with my my older brother who is my half brother and who is the musician Indra and her parents then took her back home and said she has to uh, they couldn't accept that she was being beaten up when she was pregnant and my father, meanwhile, had been transferred. He was, he was since he was involved in the in the various forms mm. of uh, struggle, mainly union with the left. Mm. He was uh, he was in the original Bolshevik party. Right, the BLP. And uh, and then he was uh, moved to punishment stations all the time. So he was moving from Polonaro mm. to Andradapura to Matale to, and he was in Badula mm. at the time. And he was being moved constantly. And uh, and he was boarded in the home of my. Uh, my actually my mother's oldest brother right. who lived in the part part of my grandfather's mm. house and she met him there 
And uh, when he wanted to marry her, she, he asked her parents and they said, uh, well, you go on. He was going to Polonaro then. You go on your transfer and we'll let you know. But my mother heard a conversation that night. Uh, the parents said, well, you know, he's not from the right caste. Uh, he's, uh, he's Christian. My mother's family was uh, Hindu, Velala mm -hmm. family. And, uh, and she, my mother, she said she didn't understand why mm -hmm. her, her parents were opposed to it on those grounds, yes, because, because here she was raised yeah. to fight yeah. against the caste system yeah. and we are all equals right. and she said there's a problem with the, there's a contradiction. Mm. And she didn't understand and she was also a rebel. Uh, of course, they, she communicated this to my father and then they uh, yeah. arranged to elope. Yeah. So they ran away. And so from my father's, uh, on, the, on my father's side too, they didn't accept my mother mm. because she was uh, divorced. Right. And here was my father coming home with a divorced mm. woman. In a way, I, I f felt it was a privilege mm. to be raised by these two, uh, two uh, people, to be born to my father and my mother, who were also uh, uh, not connected to their families because of the, the problem yeah. there. I, had, I didn't meet my maternal grandmother until I was 14 years old. And it was my half-brother Indra right. who actually brought us together oh, because right. he didn't because, understand yeah. why the, his uh, he was raised by my grandmother so right. why he said why his mother he considered her the mother mm. and why his sister who was really his mother mm. didn't talk mm. and then that we were kids and he wanted us to be together. No that uh, I think perhaps explains some of your characteristics but uh, let's go back to your school days I mean you were growing up in the 60s and that was you know when Subhash was coming in you were at ladies. Were you single medium, Tamil medium? Uh, Tamil medium. Tamil medium. And then you also mentioned that at some point you went off to Jaffna to school. What happened? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let, let me uh, go back a little bit and explain why I was sent to ladies college. My mm. father who was uh, left and right. uh, yes. uh, who was uh, fighting the, the, the comprador elite mm. if you like and uh, was very critical of that class. Uh, he, why did he send me to ladies and why did he send my brother to St. Thomas, my, mm. my second brother? My oldest brother Indra was at Royal College. Uh, it was because he felt that uh, the only thing he was going to offer, he was against anything material. So right. we didn't buy a house, we didn't even have furniture when we had very basic uh, chairs right. uh, at home. Uh, we had actually, we had suitcases instead of uh, <laughs> right. uh, wardrobes. Because he said there's no, no need to have wardrobes, we mm. had just a change of clothes mm. for the home, for school, we had two uniforms. And so it was very, uh, he himself had only two pa uh, pa uh, pairs of trousers and two shirts. Mm. And even if he had, my mother bought him shirts, he wouldn't wear them. He mm. said this is a waste of money. And so he would be wearing the same things over and over again. He said this is not important, material things are not important, but you have to have a good education. Right. It was another generation right. with a vision, much broader vision. And uh, so he, he said, the only thing I can offer my children is a good education. And then they have to take care of themselves. So the good education at the time was uh, for, for me, it was lady, he chose Ladies College. Uh, at one point he, he regretted it. I, must, I was a teenager then. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't accept that my friends for Columbus 7 and very wealthy, mm. they used to come in chauffeur driven cars. And here I would be going in, a, in the school bus mm. or in public transport. And I didn't have the same kind of clothes mm. I had. So uh, I, I kept uh, asking my father why. Mm. I mean, I wanted to have the same things, if you like. I understood much later, and I was glad he didn't mm. give us all those things. Of course, we were in the Tamil medium because we had to study mm. in the Tamil medium. If both parents were Tamil, right. both parents Singhala were, if you will remember, only mixed parent, mixed children of mixed parentage could study in English. We talked English at home. Mm. So it was very difficult for me, actually, to. to uh, I, I, can't, I didn't really use Tamil. Mm. And yes, and I'm coming to the uh, question of being a Tamil stand. Yeah, I would like to say about being a Tamil, I never saw myself as a, as a Tamil. Uh, we were in the 58 riots, a house, actually we were living, my father had just moved into the quarters, government mm. quarters in Jayantipura. Two weeks later were the riots and our house was destroyed. We were in the house. Right. And we had to hide and... So didn't government quarters was destroyed, yes. right? Yes. Right. No, the house, our house, because right. we were Tamils. Right. And but uh, what I mean is it was a government quarter. It was a government quarter. I hadn't right. realised they attacked the government. Yeah. Well. And uh, we were very small. And then my father's uh, boss was Mr. Patyarachi at the right. time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the, he was married to uh, Philip Gunawad and his mm. family. My father knew Philip Gunawad very well. And actually they were the ones who came and took us. And right. we were hiding in their home at the time. But my father was a leader of the, of the working class. Right. And I remember when these uh, hundreds of people came to the house, mm. we ran to the neighbors. Mm. And the neighbors didn't let us in. They were Sinhalese. There was a whole group of... Really? Uh, and they didn't let you in? No. There were 200 people in front with uh, knives and crowbars. And they thought my mother was Sinhala. Right. Uh, in fact, my mother is partly. Her, her grandmother was mm. from Kandy, mm. from the Taldena right. family. And, uh, and so, so they said, this, why did uh, this Tamil marry, uh, a, a Sinhalese lady marry a Tamil? And they said, I was Kali Kali to Kapandoni. That was myself and my brother, uh, right. brother who's, who was killed recently in Moscow. We were the two of us there, she was holding us, and uh, the neighbors didn't let us in. So we were standing in the veranda, there was this 200 people right. in front, uh, telling my mother they were going to kill these children. Right. And my father, meanwhile, because we, we ran right. away from the kitchen, we escaped. Right. He was caught by the people at home. Right. They caught him and he didn't come with us. And then we didn't know what happened to him. And the fisherman who used to come to our home, yeah. he used to come on a bicycle with a little wooden right, box behind. This, yeah. And he came, you know, there were all these p chaps in front uh, threatening yeah. us. Mm. He came from our house to the neighbor's house across the lawn. Mm. And he told my mother, uh, Nona Ender, he said, uh, uh, He said, uh, yeah. And said, right. So he came and took us, Gosh, yeah. my mother and... Very brave of him as well. Very, very. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my f we found my father seated there on the steps of the kitchen, back garden, mm. steps. And there were about a hundred chaps seated, mm. squatting, seated on the, in the garden. Mm. And he was giving them a long lecture about the working class and about fighting, uniting and <laughs> right. fighting. And they were all no listening, listening to right. him. Yeah. It was amazing. They didn't touch us. Yeah. And my parents never said these were, you know, mm. Sinhalese are bad, mm. or because it was the Sinhalese who helped us and protected mm. us. And, and we never grew up mm. thinking that we were Tamil or Sinhala. Right. And also in terms of, of uh, religion, my father was from a Christian family, mm. my mother Hindu family. And my parents, they, they raised us to, uh, to be open mm. and to decide. They told us when we were very young, to decide what you want mm. to be. We're not mm. going to baptize you. At Ladies College, the principal at the time, Hitchcock, Hitchcock, yes, she was saying 60s. that I should be baptized. Yeah. But it's terrible to have this girl there who's mm. not ba baptized. And my father said, well, it's up to her, them to decide mm. whether they want to be baptized or not. They took us to Hindu temples, to Buddhist temples, to the Christian Catholic Church, mm. to the Anglican Church. And my brother and I, my brother was not even a year older than me, Udaya, mm. and myself, we had, we had these long conversations on what we should be, what religion mm. we should adopt. So for us, the option was between being Hindu or Christian. Right. So my brother would tell me, uh, I'll be Hindu, that is he mm. would be um, a Hindu, so that my mother is not alone. Mm. And he says, you become Christian, so our father is not mm. alone. Mm. And then we had these long discussions, and when we were about 11 years, mm. we suddenly realized that taking Becoming Hindu was excluding the other parent. Right. It began to seem that choosing something mm. was exclusion of the mm. other. So at the end we decided we we're going to be humanists. Mm. Yeah, one of the things I think that's correct is that, you know, during those days, certainly in the type of school in Colombo you went to, we didn't have these differences. Though I think it's remarkable that your parents continue despite the 58 experience, because that must have been chilling. But then I think in the 70s, it, you know, that was, you could say mm. it was a horrible moment, but it was a moment and mm. it passed and it never happened again in the 60s. Mm. I think what really worried a lot of people in the 70s was a policy that even though it had, with inverted commas, an egalitarian theory, standardization, mm. really hit Tamils very hard, especially Tamils in Colombo and Jaffna, mm. the educational thing. And is that why you went abroad to university? Um. You know, the well, the standardization, yes, but not because I felt I was a Tamil. Mm. I wanted to study. I yeah. wanted to go to No, university. you were cut out. Yes. But, and then there was the standardization, there was a quota no system chance. that was yeah. introduced, and we lived in Colombo, so there would, it would be impossible for yeah. me to go to university. Uh, by the time my father had died, uh, he died in 71. And even at that time, I remember it was the JVP uprising, mm. and we had the, the curfew on at the time. And he was... Uh, he, he, he still, I don't recall at any moment my father, oh yes, I, yes, 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 now I remember, very important. Yeah. When the singular only was introduced, right. uh, he, uh, there was a, he had the possibility of taking early retirement. Right. 
No, this was in the 60s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. He was, uh, he was still very young, huh? he mm. was in his 40s. And he decided to take early retirement, not because of the Singhala only, because he spoke yeah. Singhala very well, he read, he wrote Singhala very well, but because he, of the uh, punishment stations he was being sent to. Right. And he said he cannot organize mm. if he remains in government service. And he was all the time mm. punished. This is why we went to boarding school. Right. Both my brother mm. and I went to boarding school. And uh, then he said, well, I'm going to take early retirement mm. on the Singhala only right. issue. Yes. And of course, he was also, I mean, he was with close to N.M. Pereira and Corvinal de Silva. So they had the same position, right. you know, uh, one, lang one language, mm. uh, two, 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 states, two countries, yeah, two, two countries, languages, right. one country. Uh, one nation. And he, he, he was, I mean, he was very critical, of course, on the mm. issue. This is what I recall. Uh, my father. But then afterwards, of course, there was the standardization and I, uh, the, there was a the question of me going to university. My father was already gone and I told him, uh, we didn't have much money. Mm. Um, my father being in the clerical service, mm. I remember half of his salary used to go to our, for our schools, mm. paying our schools. So we had very little left. But my mother had property back in, mm. in Badulla. Then she said she would mortgage her land and give me a hundred dollars. Mm. So my brother had, meanwhile, he'd been back and forth mm. to Europe a couple of, overland. Right. So I was very uh, impressed and inspired by that. And I said, well, if my brother could do it, why cannot I do it? And my mother said, who was very open and very mm. supportive, and she had a lot of confidence in me. She said, okay, go. That's marvelous. So I letting you at 18 yes. or whatever travel by yeah. yourself overland. And no, I was traveling with a friend of my brother's and a cousin. But my right. cousin returned, also from a wealthy Badullah right. family. He couldn't take the overland trip. Uh, right. on, on, we were traveling by bus and train, course, third yeah. class. We yeah. traveled three nights from uh, Chennai to Bombay in a, in a third class compartment, standing most of the way. Well, no, I've so done that as well, and it. I remember thinking, my parents were good to let me do that. This was in 1970, but to let a girl do that, I think your parents exactly. were very enlightened. No, my mother was, my mother was very much mm. you know, ahead of her times, even her in, in her own uh, mm. as, as a child. And I was, what uh, touched me so much was, my, was the confidence right. my mother yes, had in no, me. That's great. And uh, they had given us the tools. Mm. They had given us the yeah, values. And she was sure it. that I would... Uh, so you made it to Europe? I came to Europe and uh, with very, very little money, arrived in Switzerland with five francs in my pocket. Right. And anyway, I found a job immediately at the World Council of Churches, worked for two and a half years, put right. aside money to study, and I went to study in Germany. So throughout my studies in Germany, I was there for three years doing economics, then I did two years in Geneva, international relations. Rather and ironically, when I was reading your mother, the book about your mother, I realized you would have stayed in Geneva with the Devarajans. That's right. Who I, I didn't stay with them, they were away, but I stayed in their flat as well. So, you know, we must have been there around the same time, oddly yeah, enough, 1971. I was there in 71. Okay, so they, way, yeah. But they were very, it was quite funny because I knew that they were agents at actually, the daughter went to school with, uh, for a short while she was hitting mm. ladies yeah, right with well. me. And uh, my parents knew them. My mm. father knew the mm. Mrs. Devaraj. Right. And actually, he was boarded at her place when he came from Jaffna. Really? Because her father was the registrar of the University of Colombo. And ah, apparently an extraordinarily, you know, wise registrar at the university and ran it. I see. Mr. Okay, my, Swami, yeah. my father stayed, bo was boarded then. He used to teach the two girls. Right, right. He was teaching them maths and English, I think. Right. And he used to make, I think, make a little bit money out right. of uh, teaching too. And he, they were the ones who gave him a home. Mm. So when I went to Geneva and I knew, I knew them, I called Mr. Devarajan. I think he was at Antad then mm. at the time. It was also Victor Ratnavel, who was another mm. friend of my father's, who was also, he was at the ILO. Mm. But I called Mr. Devarajan and he said, uh, what are you doing here? And I said, I came over land. He said, does your mother know? And I said, <laughs> You're yes. you very well. Yes. And he yes. said, yes. I said, yes, she knows. And then he said, well, come home. Yeah. And I went to his place. And then they contacted my mother. Right. And they asked if she knew. And she said, yes, I know yeah. she's there. Right. That's marvelous. Yes. That's so, you know, such... It tells you so much about that generation. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a fasc for me. It was a fascinating time, and I'm very grateful to both my parents. And actually, I realized it was going out, leaving the country, that made me think of uh, what my father was doing. Mm. I began to, at the World Council of Churches, I became exposed to the apartheid, apartheid, right. Palestinian issue, 
Of course, I had heard about that uh, at home with my father. But uh, I didn't still quite understand this whole working class mm. thing, what was mm. happening. And then I began to be interested in Geneva at the World Council on the condition of the plantation workers right. here, yes. tea plantation workers. And I remember I wrote an article, I was 19 then, I was the youngest in the World mm. Council of Churches mm. working there, because I left when I was early, yeah. just turned 19 when mm. I left uh, uh, to Europe. And, uh, and then I wrote this article on titled The Real Price of Tea. Mm about the condition right. of the plantation workers. Mm. And, um, and then uh, I remember the, the, the directors of the World Council saying, you're a rebel rouser. Right. You know, now you mention the plantation workers. Uh, I remember I was in university at the time. And in Britain, it was a big thing that the Sri Lankans were ill-treating the plantation workers. Mm. And I have always thought that's a brilliant example of the way Britain manipulates the world. Because mm. as you're probably aware, the plantation workers were treated pausingly mm. when the British mm. ran the plantations. Mm. In fact, my old friend Derek Nugavala wrote his memoirs and said, you know, he had wanted to do something more for them. And the British bosses said, sorry, you know, the shareholders won't like it. Mm -hmm. But the minute Sri Lanka took over the plantations, this became a very hot topic in the British press. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've always felt is we need to understand that the people arguing these things are very sincere. You know, the young journalists, mm. they weren't. But I've always seen this as an example of how the big guys, as it were, mm. manipulate things. And we become the villain for what the British had done to the plantation mm. workers for a hundred years mm. and more. Mm. You know, no schools, you know, at least in the 70s, yeah. we started giving yeah. them schools yeah. and health yeah. because they were, then became our yeah. workers. Mm. What, how do you see that? I mean, do you think there was an effort in those days to denigrate the Sri Lankan tea plantations, which had been taken over, mm -hmm. because the British were now putting all their money into Kenya. Mm. The people that I worked with, and uh, what actually made me look at the work conditions of the plantation workers was actually trying to understand my father. Right. So, uh, for, so for me personally, it, it is a way of discovering mm. my father. But uh, it, there, that was a time also, 70s, if you remember, the 60s and 70s, there was this move open economy. Right. And uh, in, in Latin America, right. you had the military juntas mm. and the national security state to protect the, the multinational corporations right. and right. foreign investment. And, uh, and then you had the introduction of the 71, was the, uh, the oil crisis and then the credit crisis. There was Vietnam yeah. and the Americans had to borrow, they needed money and then they, they would detach the gold from the, the dollar. So there was all this happening at the same time and, uh, and the multinationals were moving in, they were opening up, mm. there was a privatization taking mm. place, began, it was, it, it was a big, uh, they were going right. into a big way. And then you had also the, the Green Revolution, that was something that was developed, mm. the, the various uh, uh, the, the petrochemical companies that developed seeds, that go, went along with chemical right. packages. So there was all this happening, and there were a lot of questions, especially with the uh, Latin American dictatorships and the lots of uh, 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 Latin American refugees in mm. Europe. So from Chile, from Argentina, mm. from Paraguay, from Guatemala. And, uh, I, and when I was in, in Germany, I was studying with them. There were mm. lots of them in, in, uh, in Germany. And I became part of the uh, solidarity movement right. against Videla in, in Argentina and then right. we're very close to the El Salvador, the liberation movement, mm. Nicaragua and, uh, and they were all looking at the, 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 the way the, the regimes, the, the dictatorial regimes were actually protecting multinational interests. The, the whole issue of multinational corporations and how they were using up the, the resources of the mm. land and how they were exploiting the, the working class in developing countries. And there was this, the, 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 the markets in Europe were saturated and they were moving out. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, so it was in this context when we raised the question of the tea plantation workers, it was, we were, it was, we were talking about Lipton's and Brook Bonds and it, not about the Sri Lankan state. Yeah, because that you see the, the, the way it worked out, I fully accept it because those are the horrible days and in mm. a sense that was the time when what had really destroyed Latin America for mm. so many decades, mm. you know, the, the whole uh, entrenchment of mm. multinationals in there, the dictatorships which had been supported largely by the West. US, uh, by the US. By the US in particular, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. But yeah. 
Uh, but the odd thing is that in the British press, it came out as a Sri Lankan racist government. So do you see uh -huh. what I mean? That the, the, the irony was in the 70s, here was a democratic elected government in Sri Lanka, uh, the mm -hmm. left government of those mm -hmm. days, which tried to improve the lot of plantation mm -hmm. worker. They mm -hmm. could have done more, but they certainly mm -hmm. did do better yeah. than in the yeah. 60s under Brook Bond and Lipton. Yeah. But of course, the way that all the, say, the good work, the mm -hmm. churches like you all were doing mm -hmm. to draw attention to the plight of the worker mm -hmm. was transformed into an attack on the Sri Lankan state. Mm -hmm. And I thought that his... Mm -hmm wonderful how you can manipulate yeah. the media. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it, this is always, this is continuous. It's always the case that when you have the means and the power, they will turn a story in their favour, even if it's the best of stories. Mm. And that's happening, we see today, happening yeah. in the case of, uh, uh, it's in, in the case of Sri Lanka or in the case of, look at Venezuela, mm. when, when Chavez nationalised it's to using the money for uh, development of the yeah. people. The, so, the work that he did to the social services, to, to improve the conditions of the people in the favelas. Now this is, it, the people in, in Venezuela are ever grateful to, to Chavez. Mm. And, and so they, he was using that money, not for private uh, purposes, yeah. but towards the people, education system, health system, mm. but special for the poorest of the poor. Mm. And of course they turn it around and say he's a dictator because it's not in their interest to nationalise. No, I mean, I felt a lot of that happened to the 77 government. Admittedly, I think they were not very competent and, as you said, two things happened. Mm. One is the oil crisis hit them mm. and secondly, while the price of all other commodities rose, the price of tea did not rise Didn't. in that period. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let me go back to how did your father deal with this fact that the left that he had been so close to did two things that I think may have disappointed him. One was the 1971 insurrection where, you know, the LSSP and the Communist Party were part of the government. Mm -hmm. All the radicals like Vasudeva mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deferred. The second, though perhaps is more crucial, in the 60s, the left seemed to support the SLFP mm -hmm. in what seemed a chauvinistic reaction to Dudley mm -hmm. Senanayaka's mm -hmm. district councils. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there was really rather a nasty slogans yeah. Dudley gave about a muscle about a, you know, yeah. that the Senaga is selling out to the Tamils. Yeah. Uh, did your father, was he disappointed by that? Well, actually, I'm glad you raised this question because I, I think this uh, is an important also for, if we, uh, to understand the history of the left here. He was, uh, he, he was very, very involved in the initial stages of the, well, the Bolshevik party and then the, the LSSP. And uh, he took a distance from the LSSP on the question of the coalition with the bourgeoisie. Right. He was very coherent right. in that sense. So he could not no longer support uh, a party that considers the, the bourgeoisie to be a um, uh, progressive force. So that's the coalition so he quit, with Mr. Yeah, he, yes. So that was also the time Balatampa. He was very close to yes. Balatampa. So they also quit. But he didn't join the LSSPR. He just right. left right. completely right. the LSSP. And he was very, very critical of the, the coalition. And what do you think of Philip Gunawantana, who joined up, had joined up with Mr. Bandranayaka first, when the yes. old left hadn't? Yeah. No, but he by had, the 60s had moved to the UNP. Right. No, he had absolutely no uh, respect for those who had, in a way, betrayed right. the working class that he right. saw as having betrayed the working class. Right. And uh, so he was very critical of that whole movement. Actually, uh, I myself, was very critical uh, and, and continued to be critical of a left that is, uh, that is linked to the bourgeoisie. But there's, there's a contradiction, how come I was, uh, I was uh, accepted the position of ambassador? And uh, probably uh, I wouldn't want to try to legitimize or justify the decision. Well, I, I think one has to make choices that sometimes, you know, you have to work with people who may not be ideal simply because they're better yeah. than the alternatives at that stage. But it wasn't even that. It was much more uh, what actually um, motivated me to accept the position first in Latin America, because that's what I, that's where, where I started, wanted to yeah. go, was because I believed that it was important for us to connect with the Latin American people. Right. And I was always very close to the Latin American mm. people. So I, I, was, I, I thought that was very important, the people-to-people -people relationship. But then on the, uh, at the same time, uh, I was, uh, I, and I continue to, f I will continue to fight for the independence and sovereignty of the people. So in a way, it's a continuation mm. of the struggle of, that my parents led 
the independence and, and, and sovereignty of the country. And I don't, uh, I, I, I don't accept and we cannot accept external intervention right. in our politics. I know I have, we have a lot of problems and I'm very critical and I will be critical here. I will not go out and criticize, but I will come back here because I think that uh, the people have to decide their own future. Right. And, and we have to, to empower them to do it, uh, not take decisions on their behalf. Whether it's the elites, Sri Lankan elite, I mean our parliamentary system or the, or the political system is a representational one. It's like also in yeah. France. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you you, you vote uh, a government into power, and then for the next five years, uh, you don't, uh, uh, no, you let them decide on your behalf mm -hmm. whether or not the decisions the decisions they're taking are yeah. good for the people or not. But I think it's it's important that we should be part of the process throughout, and the people should be involved in the decisions that affect them, the daily decisions that affect them. No, I think it's absolutely. And and correct. it's for us to do it here. Yeah. I don't. I will not accept intervention. For, from outside, and I would not accept, not especially countries that have no, no uh, nothing to teach us in terms of human rights or democracy or. No, I, I, I think that's that's very clear, yeah. and in everything you've said and done, you know, there are certain principles that stand out. Mm -hmm. I think we have to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you.